Good morning, gents. Bright and early today. So, we have 10 days left in the season. I've already reached platinum in both limited and constructed, so I should be getting decent rewards. Obviously, I'll be looking for diamond in constructed, but the whole goal here is to get as many cards as I can, so I'm going to continue doing drafts. But since I'm not aiming for diamond in drafts, I'm just going to do traditional drafts. It's just three wins. It's more likely you get two wins. Um, certainly one win is possible as well. But the, the tier of players tends to be lower. So you get to play three games, two, three, and hopefully you win two of them. You need a 66% win rate. Okay, let's go for it. Once you've done your Premier Draft up to Platinum, I always find it's better to switch to Traditional. Unless you're looking to get to Diamond or Mythic, I suppose. So ideally, I'll do another three days of Drafts and then I will switch to playing Constructed. Almost exclusively. To just to get to diamond and then hopefully push up to mythic. I'll also open my packs and get my new mythic cards. So is there anything here that's very strong? Vega can be okay. Lindworm's an excellent card. Treachery can be okay as well. Arctic Tree Line's a fine card for green too. Struggle for Skemthar is a great card as well. So I do have a couple of options in green. Um, Rally the ranks can be fine. It's it needs a very specific uh, specific what's it called creature type. Sorry, um, Vega could be good. Vega's fine, but only in the right deck. And I don't know what to tie myself down. I think struggle is the right option here. Hmm, Lindworm could also be good, but. Struggle tends to lend itself to Lindworm. And it's pretty decent removal. Green's always a colour I'm happy to be in. Frenzy Raider's fine as well. Blood Sky Berserker's been disappointing, but it is fine. Valkyrie's fine as well. So this one I'm probably going to be taking the Lindworm. Alrun's Epiphany is a mythic rare though. Um, so maybe it is Alrun's I should be taking. I'm very surprised to see this. So this kind of lends itself for being green-blue. Aaron's Epiphany is a game-winning card later on. It, it's very, very good. Hmm. I mean, it's a late-game card for sure, but I think this is the one we take. It also saves me on Mythic Rare as well, speaking from a free-to-play player's point of view. Valkyrie Sword is fine. Blood, Blood Sky Berserker might have been the right choice last turn, so we would have ended up with two of them. I was going to end up with two Lindworms, which would have been great for my top end. But I think I'll take the Mythic Rare. Green Blue is a happy place to be. Could also take another Vega, which would have been nice for this turn. Provoke Patrols is okay. Vega, as I've said, is a fine enough card. Doomscar is it's okay, but it's filler. Corsair's been a good card, but again, it's filler. Just be a Sentinel divides the community. Is it good enough? Is it not good enough? Pilfering Hawk's fine as well, especially in the Green Blue deck. So I think it's actually between Pilfering Hawk... Actually, it's probably the land, to be honest, isn't it? It's almost definitely Rainwood Falls or Glittering Forest. Hmm. I think we go Rainwood. It's in our colours and it helps us be mana fixing and helps us. Green Blue tends to want to be Snow. Now, do I take Frostpire Ar Arcanist? Gladiator or Sentinel's also an option. Sentinel's probably the right probably the right choice, especially since I'm gonna need mana with the expensive cards. It gives me a one mana play, helps me splash as well. It does seem to divide the community some, but it is a slow format, so mana dorks are okay. No, it's not actually a mana well technically it's a mana dork, but it's like a double mana dork. So you tap this and you tap another creature. Uh Glade Guardian Glade Walker is okay and it is a two drop. Arachnoform's garbage. So we're, we're quite strongly looking at green blue. We've got a really good mythic. I'm happy to take one mask vandals. This part of the realm's okay as well. Nico's defies destiny. This has been really nice with the Vega. If it went double Vega and into Nico, I'd have been a very strong 
blue white deck so blue might not be that open because someone's going to be playing blue white haven't seen those two cards and there's a lot of open white cards I think it is mass vandal though it's a nice enough card to see it's not an incredible card I'm just thinking about what's going to wheel here I can take mass vandal and choke off green though and then maybe look at splashing something maybe the god's hope guardian could be an okay splash I'm not actually tied to blue just yet. So do we want Gladiator or Mammoth Growth? They're both fine. Like Jara Kinseekers is actually a good card as well. Pilferin Hawk's good as well. Hmm. Pilferin Hawk is fine. And it gives me an early play as well. Uh, the other option is Mammoth Growth, which is also good. Any of these three cards would be fine. Pilferin Hawk would be fine as well. I'm leaning towards Lajara. I guess choking off green is good as well. This would be good if we do end up in a snow deck. Three Seasons is a fine card. Pilferin Hawk is fine as well. Hmm. We don't actually have any snow nonsense just yet. Although this would be one of our snow nonsenses, I guess. This is a good reason to play snow. It does give us filtering. Barshield Warrior is good in a lot of decks, but it's white aggro. Bounding Goal is an amazing card. It's probably the first time the white pacifism effect has been so strong in this set compared to other sets. Going the Blood Sky Berserker into Infernal Pit. If I double those, black would have been really, really nice. But I think we take the Pilferin Hawk here. It's in our colours, it's fine. Okay, we have options here. I could take Scorn Effigy just so I have something I can play. I can also start looking at some of these black cards. Kaya's Onslaught is good. Uh, I don't think I would splash it. But it is a good card. Grim Drawer is fine as well. It's not anything direct. Coal's fine. Is there anything here that I actually need? I guess I could take the coal just to have the coal. It's a rare card after all. Could also take the Scorn just to have a Scorn. Take the Cold but probably won't play it. Take the Mammoth Growth this time. So uh, since we're getting double combat tricks here we're probably not going to be taking any kind of equipment or runes because you either want equipment runes or you want uh, combat tricks. We've got the Gnarly Pilferin Hawk, that's nice. We've got the, Blade, the Guardian Blade Walker, that's nice as well. It's an okay card, it's fine. There's nothing here I particularly want, so I'll just look to complete my collection and take Valor. I guess we'll take Vor Fortunate <laughs> Tyrate Sword. Although I actually think it's a really bad card. Right, Sh Showdown of the Scouts is one of the best cards in the format. Uh, I don't think I've ever well, I've got one, so it is pretty good. Blade Warden's fine. Horizon Seeker's good. We'd probably end up taking Lejana the late warden just as a late game. I'd love to have taken scouts. There's no way to splash. I can't splash two colours. But this would have been a great choice. So of this pack. Another Kin Seekers would be fine. Kin Seekers would be good with the double shapeshifter already. A uh, triple shapeshifter actually. We do need some bigger creatures. Blade Warden gives you some late game like uh, options. It's a lot of times you get in a very stalled board state and just putting two tokens on something over and over again, two counters, sorry, on something over and over again is a good way of winning the game. Another Rally of Ranks. We don't have black for port. This, this one's a bit of a whiff for us. There's nothing here that screams out. Mists of Lajara can be okay. The part of the realm can be okay. The premium card is obviously Feed the Serpent and to Scary. I guess I'm slightly more likely to splash red than black. Because I'm not super tied to blue just yet. 
We could take either of these and I could end up green black or green red. So I guess it's just a preference thing what I want. Could also take green white cards, I guess. God Hall Guardian's not super good. I think I take the Firewalker. Feed the Serpent is a good card though. I guess we'll take premium removal. So let's see, there's one that I need. Ah, we've got both of them, so it doesn't really matter. So, replicating rings, fine. Glacial floodplains, okay. If you want to keep going towards snow payoffs. Glittering frost is good. So it's replicating, glittering. Snakeskin, hawk, as an option for his demon boat. also a good option if we went for red. Hmm. Snakeskin veil is pretty good. I think we take Snakeskin veil. It's in our colours. I don't mind this for splashing, but we might not end up splashing. Snakeskin veil. We're almost. We could end up mono green, to be honest. The way this is going. I'll be green white. I think I take the lindworm here. Yep. Happy for the top end, Lindworm Strong. Horizon Seeker's good. This would help us splash red. It's a shame maybe we should have went red. Over the all form. An instant or a sorcery spell. If it targets one or more permanents you control. So this works well with mammoth growth. And snake skin veil. I think we actually take this. And this kind of secures us into blue. But Orvar looks pretty good to me. I mean, it's a 4 mana 3 3. Okay. It's not a very strong card. Um, Agar's a really good card as well. So maybe that's another reason to splash red. Kind of a whiff for us. We could take the Recluse quite easily. Or we could take the Agar. And open up red to us. Agar or Recluse. We don't really have too much. We've got a wee bit of mana fixing. I'll take Agar. Recluse is okay. Agar's quite strong. We'll take another Lindworm or... Well, we get Lindworm, Raven and Snakeskin. These three are okay. Maybe I should think about it. Uh, I'd lean towards Lindworm in general. L Lindworm's been a, a bit of a like, staple for the format. Uh, Raven is fine. Like, there's no issue with the Raven. It's a pretty good card. Snakeskin Veil's fine as well, but I'm quite happy I mean, to have two Lindworms. Okay, we have a... Boom. Behold the Multiverse is one of the best uh, commons in the set. Um, Sculptor's also a really good common. I think we go... We lean towards Behold the Multiverse just because we don't have too much snow just now. And it's always good to have additional card draw. This could have been like a, a premium card, like an uncommon in another set. So Seeker or Kin Seekers. I'd lean towards the Kin Seekers just because we have quite a few shapeshifters already. So Seeker could be good for mana fixing if we do end up going red. I'll take the uh, Kin Seekers. So we are actually really heading towards uh, blue green then. Oh, this is a bit of a whiff here. I'll take the gates just in case we end up splashing white. Take the pilfering hook. Guess we take the yeti. Although we could take again if we end up splashing white, we could take the stronghold. Take the yeti. Raven forms okay. Take the battle shield warrior. Yeah. If we end up splashing white. We could play the warrior, I suppose. Probably won't play under C. Showdown the scales have been so strong, eh? Getting double showdown. Descentful Stroke's excellent. Snow Covered Forest is excellent. It's actually premium in our deck. So it really is between Disdainful and Snow Covered. I think we actually go Snow Covered this, this one. 
Um, what were the options? We had Kin Seekers. Kin Seekers is fine. Pilfer and Hawk as well. I think Hawk is fine as well, though it's better with. If you can put tokens on it, we don't. Well, I guess we've got two Delayed Walkers. We could make the, it strong. We also have uh, the Delayed Warden. Okay, we certainly take the uh, Snow Covered Forest. We 100% take. This is one of the best cards in the set. The very best card is Cosmo. Um, Cosmos, the Serpent, is the best card. Then it's Starnheim Unleashed. And then it's this Chariot. This is the third best card in the set. 100% we take it. Without question. It actually has synergy with Orvar as well. Since I can create token copies of, say, a Lindworm. And then I can attack with this and create a copy of that token. So I'm very, very excited. This is this is as good as I could have drawn. So, yeah, 100% in our colours. I mean, if I'd drawn a... Coma. <laughs> would technically have been the best, you know. Um, Alright. Saros Pacme screams out to me as being the best in this set. Um, so coming is good as well. But I think Pac-Mate is the way to go. Yeah, Pac-Mate is a very, very strong card. Um, so anything else here should consider Bow, maybe, I guess? But I feel like Pac-Mate is easily the best card in this deck. Uh, sorry, this pack. Mammoth Growth is fine. Eld League Mentor, Snow Covered Island is actually one to consider, but I take the Pac-Mate every time. Pac-Mate is probably the best uncommon. And this is the reason to splash white, and we did take a white card. So I think we have another one in here as well. So we've got Battleshield. But yeah, this is a, a, a nice um, payoff for white. And it's basically a house in itself. Icebind Pillar is also a great card. We have one, two... Technically only two Snowlands so far. Do we want Magia or do we want Icebind? I guess if we play Icebind, we stay in our colours. But Magia is actually a house and we don't have snow at the moment. Okay, we'll take Magia ambitiously, depending on what we get. Another Linworm's good. Divine Gambit's okay. Go more Champions, okay. I think we take the Linworm. We could also take Snow Colored Plains. But I think the Linworm's just a solid card. You're happy to have that as your top end. Mammoth Growth is, I mean, we have. I know it has uh, synergy with our Orvo. Is that his name? Orvo? Orvar. But uh, Lindworm's fine. It's an absolute beast of a top end. And these games do go late. Okay. So I'm kind of regretting not taking the uh, Icebound Pillar, but that's alright. Take another Mass Vandal. It's a fine card. There's nothing here that we particularly want. Kennel Master's a good card in an aggro deck. Infernal Pet can be good in the black white. Normally it ends up a 3-3. You don't normally see it end up like a 5-5 five, five, or 6-6. Six, six. Dread Rider has anything that's 3 and over 4 toughness is a good card. Just because of the way the set works, but Mass Band was fine. For our deck at least. Could be good for Splash and White. Shepherd of Cosmos is also good for Splash and White. Broken Wings is fine as well. We don't have that much mana fixing though. We didn't take any of the the rings or anything. I, take, I think we take Shepherd. It's another thing to splash in white. And it makes Magia look a bit better to splash as well. Glittering Frost could be really good here. Helps us with our splashing. I mean, it's, a, it's an average card. Ritalus is actually a positive card. But we already have quite a lot of top end. This helps us ramp, it helps us with some of our snow nonsense as well. I don't know if I want Rune of Flight, although it could be good with... I don't like it with uh, the combat tricks though. Instant or sorcery spell, it's an enchantment. Take the Pilfer and Hawk again. I don't see myself playing so many Pilfer and Hawks. I'll take the Rune of Flight, but I probably won't play it. Frostbeak Yeti or Lake? Probably take the Lake, 100%. Yeah. And be happy to have it. The lake's fantastic. We didn't get too much removal. Um, I think we got one raven form and one fight effect. Hmm. I don't think I need any more two mana spells. I'll take the depart the realm as a potential removal spell. 
Probably the Goldmore champion here, though I have all three of the cards. And I guess we'll just take Revitalize for a completion aspect. Double Revitalize. Nice. Alrighty. Um, I'm just going to switch over to my other view. When I draft, I tend to have it on a lower setting so I can look at cards compared to others. Alright. So, let's cut the white cards just in case we don't, definitely don't need to feed the serpent. So this is what we look like in a blue-green deck. And maybe this is the way to play it. Magic is fine, but we don't need them. And the Shepherd of the Cosmos is fine, but I don't know if we need them either. Combat tricks we definitely need. So these are combat tricks that can work with Orvar. <laughs> Removal is quite limited in this particular deck. Uh, we also have Struggle for Skemfer. Two more Struggle for Skemfer, and this would have been a very, very strong deck. How much snow do we have? We don't need Litten Frost if we're not running too much snow. We don't have two snow lands. So Frost Peak yeah, he's gone. We can cut the Hawks. And it would look like this. Is there anything here I don't need? This is good for splashing colours. I mean, I definitely keep the spells. It's, it's mostly like a creature deck. This is some card advantage. I always like to look at my spells. Probably don't need Rune of Flight. In which case, what would I want to play? Can't play Agar, it doesn't fit this deck. We could use some 5 drops, which kind of makes this a bit more appealing. I don't know if I want to splash white though. Like, the mana's so smooth. And just a green blue deck. In which case, play a Pilferin Hawk. <laughs> well, probably play double Pilferin Hawk. I don't think I need just better Sentinel, although it does help me ramp. Very, very slightly, I suppose. Man, it's reach. My deck is quite weak to Flyers. Like, like very, very weak, to be honest. I don't think I've. Well, I've got Pilferin Hawk. Pilferin Hawks could be good. Not versus Flyers, though. We get mass, double mass vandal, double guardian. Yeah, we're very, very weak to flyers, and we don't have any three drop creatures. That might not be a disaster though. Thirteen creatures. Too many spells, eh? Guess this is an artifact. This is also card advantage. I do like the uh, combat trick package with Orvar. Yeah, we're quite weak to flying creatures. A couple of bows would have been good, just out of reach. And we don't have too much ramp. So we've got two snows, and if we were to bring in. Litter and Frost, it could be three Snowlands. You really want five Snowlands to play a Snow Package. I mean, it's okay with Hawk, if we have the Snowland out, we can filter. If we don't, we don't. It's not a disaster. Three removal spells. Two card advantage spells. Three combat tricks. I guess it's quite a lot of spells. But then we do kind of want to be casting spells to... Don't need to part the realm. So two removal spells. It's not a lot, but it's okay. My question is, if I bring back in Magia and Jespera, cut this down, add these two. Well, I still want uh, 17 lands for sure. So 12. 15, 17, yeah. So I'd have 6, 7, 8. And you'd have 6, 7, 8. Yeah, you'd have the right amount of sources for each of these. Which is pretty good to play Magia. 
The double white is hard, but it is a late game card. But if I'm playing magic, that makes me want to play gates instead of a planes. And to play a glittering frost to help with the mana fixing. So what would we cut? Kin Seekers. We do have quite a lot of four drops. Need to keep uh, just better, just as mana fixing. You want exactly you want eight sources of your main colours if you're going to splash. I just don't think it's worth it, so I think we get rid of the planes and the gates, and we just stick to green blue, which is fine. Uh, so I just need these two lands. So we get seven, eight. We get plenty of sources of each. So the deck would look roughly like this, 14 creatures. So anything else that might be stronger. Undersea Invader, but we've already got tons of top end. Ravenous Lindworm's fine. Getting the Ravenous Lindworm down makes me think I should maybe play Rune of Flight, but it doesn't work with Orvar. So Lindworm's kind of our win condition. We'd have some filtering, so there is a reason to keep the two Snowlands. Epiphany's a good win condition as well. Behold the Multiverse is a good win condition. Well, not a win condition, sorry, it's just a value card. I have to keep the two removal spells. The real option is we're not bringing more Hawks, but I don't think there's any reason to. Okay, I, I think we run it like this. It's a shame we don't have any five drops, but I guess it's our top ends, it's at six instead. It's quite a, a strong core between the twos and the threes. Uh, yeah, we've got some good value cards. Oh, I should side deck. <laughs> of course, I should side deck. <laughs> Alright. Um, where's my it's, where, where's my side deck at? I thought this was a Premier Draft and all the best of three. I guess it's just open then. Alright, cool. Three games remaining. Let's see how we do. Wee bit nervous. I haven't played a traditional game for a long time. Best of three games. But I think if we can get through the early game. We're very weak to flyers and flyers are really good in this set. So a lot of people running them. On the play though. Not ideal. So I think we mulligan. Having no creatures at all. Ah, this is much better. We only had 17 lands, you know. Like, uh, we've been flooding out quite a lot of these games recently. We'll just play a mass vandal. Turn 2. And hope we draw one of our cards. We have to count these lands, make sure I didn't put in 20 lands. What is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And as long as we draw playables from here, we're fine. After the world tree, excellent card. So opponent's playing three colour. I think I foretell this. And so we're kind of dependent on combat tricks and Orvar for creature advantage. Spine pillar. It'd be nice to have a mass vandal now. Flooding out a wee bit. Fair enough. I'm reasonably certain I didn't put in 20 lands. Oh, look at SKS. The Seeker's Chariot as well, same as myself. Honestly, this is um, the, the best card, oh. third best card in the format. So, it's a bit of an issue that. So, I can Raven form, Artifact, or Creature, and I think I need to. I guess we'll play another green. So he's got mostly an artifact enchantment deck. I've got two mass vandals, which should be good against the deck. Artifact or enchantment. Berg Strider. Mammoth Grove will be handy. It, it makes these things strong. I'm going to get a bit of a beating here. Maybe I'll be a wee bit floody in my. Yeah, a, a little bit floody. But we'll play the uh, Ravens Lindbergh. Like I said, these are very slow games. Potentially bringing in the Rune of Flight could be a good option just to have. Just it's much better with equipment. 
We used to be able to give something flying to block against. Well, he's playing four colours. One, two, three, four, five colours. So we're playing against a five colour opponent. So I can attack with Lindworm. It's okay. I can also struggle and kill the Bjerg. Or I can just press no attacks. And we'll just foretell this. End up. Let's see, we're flooding out a wee bit here. That'd be a good card for us to have. We do have another mass vandal, so if we can get a creature in the graveyard, we can destroy the icebind pillar. And it means that next turn we should value the mass vandal a wee bit higher. Not to put it down on turn two. So I don't mind the opponent going in for two points of damage a turn. You might attack with the Bjerg Strider, and then I'll use Mammoth Growth to kill it. So it becomes a 5-7. Fine enough. Opponent has no mana issues with a, a 5 colour deck. Please Lindworm. So I can struggle and kill that. And I definitely will. Opponent uses Ice Pine Pillar to slow it down. And we press no attacks. So we need to draw another Mass Vandal. We've flooded out a little bit here. The opponent's got a card advantage. He might have a combat trick, but I actually don't mind him killing my Mass Vandal. Considering we took a mulligan as well, we seem to have got a lot of lands. Ice Pine Pillar's been uh, real good for the opponent so far. Okay, this is actually not so bad, since I can put it on the Mass Vandal. But once again, we're weak to Flyers. I'll keep the land just in case a, I get one of the Pilferin Hawks. Um, I could attack with a 7-7. Seven, seven. He's just going to tap it down with the Lindworm, uh, the Ice Bane Pillar the next time anyway. So he was going to tap either way. I'm leaving it up, was probably a mistake. 5, 6, 7, and that's 10. Yeah. Flooded out too much there. It's the life. He get extra card draw off his. Yeah, we definitely have 17 lands. 13 creatures is fine as well. Is there anything I need to bring in? Don't need Litter and Frost. Might bring in Rune of Flight just because he has so many flyers. What should I get rid of then? Pilfering Hawk? Guess so. Certainly, Raven Form's good here since he's got artifacts. And. Mass Vandal's very good here as well. Yep, that should be fine. We're on the uh, the play again. It's a shame though. I feel like I've been flooding these last couple of days, but I know it happens to everyone equally. Play for. When I say I've been flooding these last few days, guys. Alright, much better. Could be one of the end game cards. Hope we draw blue. Man has been an issue these last few days. Opponents playing legitimately like five colours. You know, every colour of the rainbow here. And still being fine. You could say he's got mana fixing and such like, and I suppose he may have mana fixing and such like. Do I I think I need to foretell this. Just so that if next turn. I don't draw a land, I need to play this to draw a card. So I hit my land drop. Okay, hit the land drop. Not really anything for me to play here. Foretell this and I guess I just cast this. I don't think you'll believe I have a counter spell. Do 
Certainly want to land next turn. Don't know if I want Orvar though. Guess if I play Orvar, I can struggle, but it's, it won't work out with the mana. So it should be like this Orvar struggle, since it's going to be 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, Orvar kills Mistwalker. Okay. Alright, Mistwalker's a good card as well. Traditionally, playing blue gets you flyers. <laughs> like, you're not normally weak to flyers. Opponents get no issue with his mana, see that? And this gets him a man uh, card as well. So he can take a snow card. No problems. So, do we play Orvar and Struggle? That's a legendary creature, though. Or do I play Saraf's? Certainly play this. So, if Orvar's down there and I struggle, I'll get a copy of... But I can't get a copy of Orvar. Create a token that's a copy of one of those permits. I could get two Saraf's down by putting struggle on it. But is that too greedy a line? I guess I'm only going to take one more. Can I just play this struggle, remove Mistwalker, and attack for one? Uh, I think that's probably the line. Let's find out if the token counts as legendary. Well, that didn't seem to work. If it targets one or more permanents you control. That was a sorcery spell. Hmm. Right, we play Pac-Mate. We play the Elf. I guess we're going to attack for one. Isn't a sorcery spell? One or more permanents? Do I just not understand how this card works? Other permanents, right, cool. Other permanents, right, I did not see other. Eh. Does five. I could double block here. Or I could just take five. Take five, put Rune of Flight on Orvar. Yeah, but won't block. If I was to kill it, mm, okay. Th three or more creatures that share a creature type. Chain shapeshifter, shapeshifter, elf shapeshifter. So it'll be a five. It still wouldn't be good enough to take this out. Now that's Lady Ravnus. Attack with the old form. Yeah. Okay, let's hope we get some uh, monstrous growth. <laughs> mm. Sarah's pack mate, great card. Opponent has no issues despite running so much different colours. I'm a wee bit jealous. I don't know why I, I seem to mana flood or mana screw. Next time I can. Um, Rune of Flight on the Ravenous. Draw a card. I can also play Lichara. I've got to hold on to the the Mass Vandal. Although I actually need to suicide a card to use a Mass Vandal. But we can probably suicide the Pilfering Hawk. Or just spare I guess. Okay. So if he attacks with a U, I block with the Ravenous, he will draw his own Ravenous, which is fine. Blade Walker is pretty good as well. So we play Rune of Flight on the Ravenous Lindworm. That's fine. 
Um, I think I put down the Blade Walker and put a counter on the Ravenous. Just because it presents lethal next turn. I quite like that. Cool. So we need to hold back his Miss Walker or remove the Ravenous. Now he didn't have too much. Okay, he's got a Spine Pillar. That's okay. So I can play this. I can also suicide the Glade Walker. I can attack, yeah. So he's going to tap my Ravenous. That's okay. So if I attack with this. Let's see if let's him in for one. He must assume that I've got monstrous growth as well. Could I attack with this and the pack mate, of course. But if he doesn't block it, I'll just put down Mother Ravenous. And then I can destroy the ice bind. If I've got monstrous growth, it becomes a 5-5, five five, which is good. Okay, double blocks, that's fine. In which case, I play Vandal and Kinseekers. If he had Sock coming, it would be pretty embarrassing. Right, destroy that. So I traded my 1-1 one, one, for... And now this is 1-2-3, so yeah, this definitely gets the counters. Yeah, I'll take an armor Vandal. I'm gonna present the lethal again. <laughs> Always good to see. Opponent scoops. Alright, final game. Uh, I think we have to run it exactly like this. Honestly, I'm half tempted to cut a, a, a land, but that it can't be the right decision to cut a land. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the luck the opponent has to run Magia. Obviously Magia, Gates and Shepard is another option. And Shepard would help with flying. But I think playing it this way is the best. Orvar has not popped off for us yet, but it is always funny to see a, a mythic do nothing. But I think the way we have our deck is the way we have to play it. So we need to hold on to the Vandals just for removing that ice bind pillar. Okay, well, we do have a turn 2 play, turn 3 play, turn 4. We did not draw any green mana. We don't actually need it, and the opponent's going first. We, need, we don't need it till turn 3. Turn 3, putting down Saroths and holding up snake skin's fine. I generally try not to mulligan as much. Every time this guy hits every mana colour he needs. We can also uh, foretell this, so we've got options. So we've flooded, we've mana screwed, are we going to mana screw again? It certainly starts to look so, doesn't it? Hey, I believe we foretell this. Turn 3 we can play the Raven for him if need be. Turn a 1-2 into a 1-1, one, one. I don't think we'll do that. Miss Walker's an okay target for this though. So do we foretell... I think we foretell Epiphany. And we mana screwing, can't believe it. It's actually been like. So these three games, but also the last video, it happened the last four games. Mana's been a bit screwy. Now you can say, oh, you shouldn't have kept uh, a two mana hand, but when you're on the draw, you mean that the opponent is on the play, he's running five colours, no issues. He's got one mana fixing so far, but he's just drawing the lands he needs. Yep. Not looking fantastic here so far, I have to say. Uh, I guess we double foretell Mammoth Growth. So yeah, we need to draw a green mana. Um, I mean, luckily the opponent's also running a very slow deck. So doing three damage a turn isn't super threatening. He has mostly good flyers. If I can get down this chariot, it'll be a really good spot. 
It just basically spawns infinite cats. Hawk, 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 hawk. So he's got four hawks. Well, four birds, I suppose it would be. This does double his threat though, so I'm on a much tighter luck. But yeah. Mana screw. Can't believe it. Can't believe I'm going to lose this game to mana screw. Opponents never had to mulligan every turn. Look at this. Just amazing mana. Across is a five mana card. Yeah, this, this seems pretty bad. Right, we have to raven from this fellow. We don't really have a choice. And we'll continue to mana screw. It's part of the game, admittedly. But it's not the most enjoyable part, especially since it seems to be happening to me. And admittedly I had one mana fixing. Yeah, we're in trouble. I'll just play this just to draw a card. Can I get a green land? I did not. <laughs> kind of a sad way to end the game. We did have eight sources of green, so I think it's actually nine sources of green. Oh, that's the game. Just an absolute beatdown. Didn't get to play a card. Bit of a shame, but these things do happen. I think our changes to the deck were correct. Not sure if I should keep the Rune of Flight in for additional card draw. Alright. Usually traditional draft is a wee bit easier than premier draft. But the best we can do now is a thousand gems. KKO. Usually you don't get as competitive opponents. What is going on today, guys? Like, what is this? <laughs> Alright. Well, that's a bit better. I actually think I put back a land. I only need three, don't I? So I'll put back a blue. Sure. I think I played Blade Walker as a 2 2. I'd rather be putting the token on a hawk. The opponent's not done anything, so do I need a 2 2 down? I think I do. Hold on to the Vandal, I can play this next turn. Or I can play the Vandal and play this next turn. Hmm, I thought we'd take this card. But I think you need, like, at least for this particular one, I think you need 5 or 10 snow permanents if you include uh, lands as well. So we play this. And attack. And I actually think we pass. Yeah. So I like, got my Berg Strider, so it was two mana to draw one card. It's pretty good, to be honest, like if you think about it. it could also be two mana to draw three cards. Uh, I need to keep my Raven form for this card. I guess I should have played Mass Vandal last turn to proc this. But I think I'll play Greedy. I won't do anything. I'll play Ravenous next turn and then Flit Jara. Yeah. Ah, the opponent scoops. Okay. Well, I'm not going to change anything. I'm, I'm quite happy with the deck at the moment. Obviously, bringing in Rune of Flight versus Flying Creatures is a good option. And I actually might start bringing in White versus Flying as well. Even though it weakens my mana. My mana's been screwy anyway. We were disappointed so far. God, I mean, that was a bit strange. Six lands. Six lands in my opening hand. Bit of a strange one. Well, this looks a wee bit better, eh? Let's be honest, a wee bit better. So we got a turn 2, turn 3, combat trick, turn 4, one of the best things in the game, crew 4. We got our all form. So far, we've not used the uh, the text on this creature, it's just been a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, 
the artifact or just creature? Permanent. So I could copy a seeker. Pretty wild. So maybe the opponent had mana issues that last game. He seems like he's trying this turn. One, two, three colours at least. Four. <laughs> One, two, three. No, I guess it's just three. One, two, three. No, it's four, it's four. It's four colours. There is mana fixing in blue, admittedly. Yeah, we splash this. Well, I don't know why it didn't splash with uh, green. Like, why did it keep my blue up? Could have splashed with these two and held this up. It's an instant card after all. It's future turn, isn't it? A later turn, yes, it's the opponent's turn. Well, this is the other side of mana screw, I suppose. Right, keep attacking. The opponent's on an 18 turn clock. Man, it's been wild today, boys. It's been absolutely wild. Actually, not just today, the last like, couple of days. I know what happens to everyone um, when you play a land. No, it's other elves. Magis when you play a land, yeah. Okay. So, I think we play Glade Warden, so we can start putting tokens on this. Or do I play Seekers? If I play a Seeker, and then he moves one of the cats. And I can play, yeah, I play a Seeker, I can play Orvar, and I can play Snakeskin Veil on a Seeker. Which would be pretty good. This is a, another cat token, you love to see it man, look how beautiful it is. Look at that printed card. Gorgeous artwork, look at it! I need to show my missus that one day. The wife will love that nonsense. Alrighty, so. Draw a single green mana, right? Play Orvar. So if he taps one of the cats, I can't crew the chariot. Oh, okay, he can tap the chariot if he wants. Alrighty. Didn't draw the land. So what's best here? I can attack with the cats and I can double mammoth growth to remove both of these. I just think it's a bit of a waste without playing Orvar. I can also play Kinseekers to have a block on the Elvish or to double block the Berg. One, two, yeah I guess it'd be fine. Comes a 3 5. Mass Vandal, good. I think I need land. I think I need to do better than a Mass Vandal. He's not shown any artifacts. He might not be an artifact deck. There's no reason to assume that he is. Okay. So it means I can block the Bjorg for free. Still kind of mana screwing a wee bit. 17 lands. 9 mana sources for both of my main colours. I've only got 2 colours in Italy. Lindsay Cosmos, usually with giant, so Bjerg's a giant. Yep. Pretty exciting. I think this will be a good game. But kind of a weird one that the uh, opponent scooped. I guess he was mana screwing. Maybe he's just frustrated with my play. Thinking I'm taking too long. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, four. The opponent hit his land uh, three times in a row, boys. <laughs> Considering I've uh, scryed as well, I put things in the back to try and get land. We want land, play Orvar, crew the chariot, snakeskin veil or mammoth growth on the chariot. Is the plan. Is any other permanent. And then I can have two chariots attacking each time. Does it matter that it's legendary? Good question. Very good question, guys. I don't know. We did not actually get. <sighs> okay. So I think I crew the chariot. Attack. Yep. And then I have snakeskin veil and mammoth growth. 
Do I also attack with the Pilfering Hawk? I think I do. Okay. Crit two two. Blocks with Bjerg. Or he double blocks. Double blocking is an absolute blowout. Right. Do we. What we're going to play if we play the Mammoth? So I can play the Mammoth Growth and still hold up Snapeskin Veil vale and keep the other Mammoth Growth cheap. I think that's the right option. So if he casts a removal spell here to try and blow me out, I can cast Snakeskin. Yep. Yeah. That's all I'd love to do then. So that was a, a, a nice wee turn of play. So I mean I know I went basically uh, one card for one card there, which is fine. I also gained a token. Happy enough. If I'd had my Orvar down, who knows. But Orvar couldn't block the Bjerg and let Jara can. Berg? Bjerg. Please Ravenous. Okay. Draw land. Nice. So this time I do play the Orvar. Yep. I crew the chariot. Attack with the chariot and this. Do I also attack the kin seekers? Guess I can. Because no matter what he blocks, I can put Mammoth Growth on it. Sweet. And I'll just copy the one that isn't tapped. I don't know if that matters. Okay. It is. The other one will go to the, the graveyard. Right, okay. So, it do is affected by the legendary role, guys, now that we know. Right, then done. Double combat trick was nicer. So, Orvar has still not done anything. <laughs> I was thinking, though, it'd be nice to have the... Uh, if the chariot could be made into a token, then the chariot could copy the chariot, like, continuously. We can see what the chariot can do, look at this, that's insurmountable for the opponent. Although I think this opponent's having a bad day because he seemed to scoop pretty easily. So we got at least a one win, so we'll get the packs. And that's us, three of our four wins. So we get one pack for one win. So it's absolutely no difference getting one win and zero wins. But the next one could be everything. I think we started off at 2,400 gems, so this one gets us to like, if we win this one, we'll be at 1,400, which means we can't play any more draft, but that's what we're wanting for anyway. We want to get uh, as many packs as we can prior to Vixie. Play first. Okay, we got a 2-drop, get some foretell nonsense, we get mana. This, this seems totally reasonable. It's not a strong hand. Totally reasonable hand. I've got no issue with it. So uh, the reason I think this is better... Mm, do I play? I think I do play this before the Bladewalker. I'd rather have a 2-3 in there and a 1-1 one, one on the ground. The reason I think that this format's better is that it's unranked. So you tend to get less good opponents, let's say. Maybe that's a bit offensive, but it is what it is. So, I need to kill Finn. I don't have an easy way of doing it. I guess he can kill him. I can play her and double block. Yeah, that's the right option. In which case, what's best? Put a 2 2 in the ground or have a. If I put the 2 3 in the air, you'll always kill the 1 in the air. So I guess you put it here. Yeah. No attacks, end turn. I actually need to land and I'd like my combat trick since I work with Orvar. At least we know we can't use a combat trick on a legendary. Okay. 
So you can attack the pick. Attach the pick, sorry. And now we can't block. So we want. Equipment's been very good in this set. I get a poison token. He gets a treasure token. So if I play this next turn, I'll be strong enough to trade one for one. Which is fine. And I think that's what I do. Yep. I also get scry. The hold is absolutely perfect. Do I double attack? Guess I'm trading the Litjara with them anyway, so why not? Finn's a good card. It's hard to deal with. Especially for my deck. Although, I'm just thinking I actually can't trade Litjara with him. Because he only does 3 damage, so I guess I just take another 2. That was a mistake. I should have kept one more back. There was no need to go for 1 damage. I should have kept the hot back. I guess I'll do that this turn. Other options to... A mammoth growth. Horizon Seeker. You can swap the vein, the pick over if he wishes. To make this a 4 3. Two colours, happy enough, another gold vein pick. And then equip it to who Finn of the Horizon. Okay. So, do I foretell or do I just keep it open? This is instant, so I can cast it anyway. I guess I just attack with the hawk. I'm going to trade the Delayed Walker for Finn and kill the Horizon Seeker with Jara. Equipment's been good, Govain's been good as well. It's been impressive. So, he could have Mammoth Crow himself. If he does, um, I think he just blows me out, but at least it's only one additional card. So if he has Mammoth Growth, he trades Mammoth Growth for Guardian and Mammoth Growth. It's a 1 for 2, so it's good for the opponent. But I didn't have any choice. I could not get a big enough creature down. What was I going to trade? Ravenous with it? Maybe. The turn before, I should have kept both of these back and traded. We would have put Golvain pick down, so it would have been blown out either way, yeah. Opponent certainly seems to be set up for a slow and grindy matchup. 3 4. That's a 4 4. So I could play. Glade Warden. As an option. If he attacks with the Seraphs, I can also double block. Or I can play Behold. I think they'll play Behold because um, I can't keep missing these land drops. Alright. Uh, this is a game ending card. Uh, no, nah, I think it's correct. Okay, no attacks. We've managed to stabilise at least. The opponent did go first, remember? If your attacks with Saraf's a double block. If he attacks with both, I trade with the Horizon Seeker and let the Saraphs through. Okay. Four mana. Bound in gold. It's three mana, was it not? No, it's four. Stroll. Okay. Opponent with some premium cards. I think I take nine. I hope I hit a, a land drop. And put down my Lindor. Opponent's doing well. Ah, opponent is playing three colour. Okay. So this turns into a 5 7. If I play this, I have a 3 3 that doesn't do anything. I think I need to block the 5 7. What if I foretell this? I think that's the right option. Foretell this, leave up three. This just becomes six mana, doesn't it? It only takes one mana off. <laughs> okay. No attacks in turn. 
Right, plenty can have to blow me out. Removal spells, demon bolt. Yeah. Um, if he has a combat trick, he puts it on the creature I don't block and ends the game that way. We just couldn't quite get stable this game. We, we kept missing land drops. The opponent did not miss land drops. Admittedly, he did have horizons he got to get a land. But he got to six, no problem, and he's playing four, four colours. One, two, three, four, yeah. Four colours make sense when you've got Goldbane picked, though. It is mana fixing. And his path as well. Can he afford to sacrifice it this turn? It's not mana. One, two, three, four. Is it not five? No, it's way more. Two, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he could do it. He could do it this turn. In which case, I think I need to Mammoth Grove, otherwise I die. Right, we need a green mana to put down Ravenous. A 100% trade if Elfrin Hawk. He could move the Goldvein pick over, but he can't now. But he could have. He could move the Goldvein to here rather than taking the greedy line with the path. Attacked with a 6-6 six, six that I couldn't do enough about. But we get another stay of execution. Green mana, Lindworm. Okay. Back up to 9. No attacks. May have to jump with the Hawk. Necromancer. Snow source, is he? One. He's only got one snow source. <laughs> yeah, there's a 6-6. Six, six. I mean, I'll trade. 100% I'll trade, because I've got another Ravenous. It's not like I have a choice. I can't take 6 damage, sitting on 9 health. Right, get down this Ravenous and get down Lajara and then start putting tokens on the Hawk. Counters on the Hawk, should I say. Why do I keep saying tokens instead of counters? So again, make this a 6 6 as well. Oh, but he's playing greedy. He could have made the Necromancer a 6 6. I guess he could next turn as well. Okay. Now, this turn potentially, I don't trade with the Necromancer. Blade Walker, 6 4. You could always put it on the Necromancer and make it into a 7 7. Yeah, 6 5, sorry. So I don't. I can just chomp block, or I can just take 6. I think you take 6. Yeah. Take 6. And then we can play this into a 7-7 and put this down as well. It's a bit of a shame because he gets the double proc. But I don't want to trade this thing. Since we need to stabilise, yeah, I'll have a 7-7. And a 1-1 for jumping. The opponent obviously has quite a broad board. Gets a land. Ramp, ramp. Okay. So I could play Epiphany. I'm not sure it gets me anything though. I could do it next turn and then I can double ramp. Right, so we'll play a 3 3. And we'll play. make this into a 7 7. And we'll next. Stable, kind of, maybe. Maybe blocking the uh, six five last turn was the right move. I'm not sure. Mesa anti seven seven. So I just chomp the ravenous, and then next turn I can add more tokens onto my own ravenous. I can play Epiphany, get two one ones, and then token and token, counter on counter. Sorry. 
There's no point in drawing a card, discarding a card. I guess I should have blocked with the hook. Oh, okay. That's an excellent card. Creature or Planeswalker. Do so he'll get another creature on every single turn? I don't think we're winning this one. This, this guy's getting amazing, Dick. Okay. So we play Al runs. We put counters on, counters on. I think we just put counters on the, the Lindworm once and then counters on the Hawk the next time. And we'll have two 1 1s for blocking. Okay, we certainly play this first. We'll play Fifth now. I uh, guess we can attack with a 1 1. 1 2. We can play Struggle. Right, so this can be 8. So. What would you like to do with 8 damage? Who would I kill? Kill Ravenous? Or kill Horizon? This would become an 8-8 eight eight with the counters. This also becomes quite strong. Guess we get rid of our Blade Walker. This is a 9-9. Nine nine. This makes it into a 10-10. Ten ten. And then I've got a 10 10 sitting. Do I care about Horizon or do I care about Lindworm more? I've got 1 1s for jumping. I can also kill the Necromancer. I just worry he's going to find a way of removing this and then I, I lose the game. Certainly to play this. So Ravenous to Ravenous, I guess. He is going to get a... Uh, no tax. Yeah, he's going to get a creature each turn, thanks to Pris Prismatic. 15 cards left, if I can la if I can survive 15 more turns. And we do have a massive 10 10. Does he have removal? What kind of removal could he have? Bounding gold would do it. He can't play Feed the Serpent. Poison the Cup would do it. So Poison Cup, Bounding Gold at the moment. Well, he could play Feed the Serpent if he hits with uh, the Gold Vein pick. Yeah, he's not got infinite removal though, you know. He actually probably the right decision to attack with all. Okay. So he's going to hit with a 5-5 five, five and a 6-5. I block the 6-5 and I chump the 5-5. Five, five. He's going to get a creature each turn though. Okay. You're going to swing with a 6-6. Six, six, and then buff with Mammoth Growth. I think I chomped the 6-6. Six, six. So this this goes here. This goes here. This blocks here. Um hitting for five. Guess if he has Mammoth Growth, he can buff the Necromancer. And I die anyway. I think I need to trade where I can. So I'm gonna get it for six. Okay, if he has a combat trick, I'll lose anyway. Nope, I just lose. Can't count, he's trampled. Uh, oh. Yeah, made a mistake there. I had to block that with the Lindworm. Well, this opponent has a strong deck. Oh, let's be honest, very strong. Do I need Bruno Flight? Nah. I think we run it exactly the same and just kind of hope we get there a bit earlier. But I don't think we win this one. I think this is a loss. It's a shame. I was kind of hoping for my first traditional draft in a long time I would get the two wins. But sometimes you get one win. I don't. Th our draft was strong enough. But the opponents get an amazing deck. It's weird that the opponents keep running like four or five mana colors and doing so well. There wasn't really anything for me to bring in there. Magi, I guess, could have been an option. I mean, maybe this turn we get our Isika down or Ovar down. Ovar should be a late game card. You saw me casting cards on my Lindworm. And it should just make loads and loads of Lindworms. And once I've got one Lindworm, it would synergize with Essica. So my deck, in theory, is synergy, but I mean, the opponent got down to like 15 cards. Okay. 
I go first, but I don't have my colours. And I don't have creatures. Yeah, uh, I've been a bit suspicious so far. Okay, this will be fine. So I keep Isika for sure. Get rid of Orvar. Or do I keep Orvar and get rid of Glade Warden. I guess it's the same either way. Need to return two cards. Do I keep Snake Skin Veil? And get rid of these two. And hope Isika's enough to bring me through. I think I do. <laughs> Never seen the opponent mulligan down the five, by the way. Seven in his hand. It's been a strange day for my initial draws. I know what happens to everyone. Guess I could have kept the initial hand. But I prefer to keep hands where you don't have colours when you're on the on the draw, just because you get the extra shot at a land card. Sculptor, yeah, the opponent's got great cards, man. Great cards. Okay. So do we attack? You can still do three damage, so I don't think we do. Next turn I can play is Seekers, and we can see what we do. Please the pick. On the sculptor. Or on Jasper. Okay. Plays it on Jasper. Attacks with Jasper. I block and put down Snake Skin Bill. Okay. Seems good to me. Go for card and mana. Does the opponent miss a mana drop? He does not. His opponent's never missed a land drop either. Right, let's play Isika. And we attack for 3 3. So if they don't have a way of removing the chariot, we're in a very good position. It's one mana to bring in, put on the pick. We can activate a 4 4. If they put down another land, although we didn't see any combat tricks, okay, it becomes a 4 4. I don't trade. So, I'll leave that. Well, I could trade the cats. So, if I trade the cats for the sculptor. Okay, he didn't give me the option. I guess we need to wait. The equipment is very strong in this uh, this format. Just because creatures try and sell a little bit less. My opponent's hitting everything. So I need to get a combat trick. Certainly this one feels a little bit more winnable. Although he's, he's got, you have to admit, it's a good board state. Plays Horizon Seeker. If he attacks with Sculptor, I think I'll double block with the cats. This is at least a stall board. Um, so I can sacrifice this, create another Pilferin Hawk, or I can create a Delayed Guardian. That could be good. I think I do that. And do I need a, a land to do this too? <laughs> Means if I draw my What am I thinking? If I draw my Lindworm, I'll be sad. But it does put the opponent on three sixteen. I guess it is like a six ton clock, so it's not anything to be excited about. As soon as I get a uh, monstrous growth, though, I'll attack with Isika. And Guardian of Gladewalker as well, I suppose, yeah. 
I guess I could uh, block Blade Walker with these two. Hmm. Or he could triple block the chariot, but I think that would be okay. It would be an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah. Cool being pick. I mean, I just block with a uh, cat and blade worker, yeah? I've got a hawk for. Yeah, I just block like this. Guess I could have blocked just with blade worker. Give him the option to take the cat, I suppose. I suppose I was thinking about double blocking with the cats. It might be more foil him doing that. Just because it gets easy to not get a target. Okay. Let's get a life linker. Okay. Monstrous growth. Ravenous Lindworm. Making me sad. Right, I think we attack with the... I guess we're going to attack with both. If he attacks with his, I can activate Chariot, let Sculptor through. Yeah, okay. This makes me sad that uh, I created the copy last turn. I guess a copy of Hawk wasn't that exciting. Maybe I'll rush that play. A copy of Lindworm would be much better. Just wanted a flyer. Plus it's efficient to use your mana, I suppose. Okay. I think I'll let this through. I'll do a double block. Now we can double block. I can create a, a copy of my Hawk. It's a token as well, so... Okay. Draw land, put down Lindworm would be nice. Hmm. Right, now I can't attack with my Hawks. I actually think that's a mistake. That's fine. I think he has to put that on Finn the Fang better. So if I activate the Chariot and attack, I can create a top copy of the Hawk. And he'll just trade it for Finn. Maybe that's the right move. Nah, we'll wait. Sadly this time it's a no attack situation. <laughs> yeah, if I'd, I wasn't really thinking when I made this uh, token. Well, I guess I was expecting to have to trade the cats. But if I'd made a copy of a Lindworm, and then I can attack with the Chariot and make another Lindworm, that'd be a game winning position. Whereas at the moment, it's just okay. You can move the gold vein over, so Finn has four health, and then I'll be trading for Lindworm, which is still really good. Okay. Rune of Flight might be worthwhile in this deck, especially since I think I can put it on the Seeker. I think if I get through this one, that's what I need to do. Right, I'll play this and I destroy the gold vein pick. Now I think I can attack with the 2 3. I wouldn't be blocking the. Yeah, I can. I wouldn't be blocking Finn with the Lindworm anyway. So you can attack with Finn. I don't mind taking one damage. It's a 10 turn clock. Uh, sorry, is it? Five turn clock? I know. Yeah, five turn clock. Four fin, I mean. To get the stacks of poison. This is hard for my deck to deal with as well. Yeah, I think if I... We go into a third game, I think Rune of Flight. Just because I can put it on the chariot. And then the chariot can be flying in. I actually think that's much better. I was saying we shouldn't have Rune of Flight because it doesn't go on... Because it doesn't go on any equipment. 
I just let him through, I don't mind taking two damage. Four now. Okay. Well, plenty of land. I guess I should probably have filtered that one with this. Looted it, is that what it's called? So that was a mistake, I should have looted the land away. This is enough land. So next land I'll loot away with this. Opponent seems to be drawing his cards and I don't seem to be drawing mine. Kind of similar situation we are in last time. He's at 20 cards, I'm at 26. And we know he's got some game winning cards. Uh, I think we just take this again, no blocks. At least this time we can attack with Chariot though. So attack with Chariot, he's going to double block here. I really just want Monstrous Growth. I guess that's what I need to wait for. Okay. Did not hit it. Right, let's filter away this. Okay. Playing a wee bit fast today. I just think I've drafted long as well. I just take the two damage. Like it's not gonna end the game. Um when it gets to eight I'll need to block obviously. Yeah, opponent has just an amazing deck. No issues with mana, even though he has. I guess the gold vein picks help as well. Okay. Let's get into this. This plays. Comes a 3 4. No more land, thank you. Okay, just done a double block thing. Plays Dalwart Valkyrie, gets a 2 2 back. Portland just seems like he can do whatever he wants, no issues. So, how do we block this fellow? Pilferin Hawk and. Kinseekers in it. Fine by me. Takes the Kinseekers. But it's still just a one for one trade. No, it isn't. How did he manage to hit both? I don't really understand what happened there. Oh, he must have separated the damage into two. Yeah, I know you can do that. Okay, destroy Prismatic Bridge. Get into the Hawk. Okay, do I crew the Chariot and attack? Nah, I need Monstrous Grove to do that. Right, we're taking three a turn now. <laughs> but obviously we can trade a Hawk with the Valkyrie. 16 and 20. Four cards ahead. If we win this, we bring in... What do we bring in? Do we bring in Magia? I guess we're not. Like It's, it's not like it's going to be a fast ending game, is it? Okay. So this puts me on a 4 turn pluck, which is pretty good for the opponent. I wouldn't mind one of my own removal spells. It also means I don't have any tokens to copy with the chariot. Lynn Worm's good though. Uh, I guess I can attack with my own 6 6 now. He can jump. That's fine. I'll take it the two story seekers. If I get Orvo, Orvo, is that his name? Orval, Orval, Monstrous Growth. Copy the Lindworm. 
chariot, copy the Lindworm. That's a game ending situation. But it's not what I get. Right, we certainly attack with our 6-6. Six, six. And it looks like we can pretend to have... Yeah, he's just going to jump, isn't he? That's okay, though. We trade one for three. Or he just jumps. Okay. And done. So now we can attack with Lindworm and Chariot. I'm kind of holding Chariot open for a game ending situation. We do have a struggle for Skemfar, I don't think we've used it yet. So, struggle for Skemfar and. Do I block here? Four, seven. Next turn. I think I do. Seven. Yeah, I think I need to. Obviously, he chumps next turn, I chump next turn. Aaron's Epiphany seems good. It's four to crew this. I don't have four. I can crew with the Lindworm, attack with this, create a copy, and I think that's probably the right option. To get another flying creature copy, yeah. That's a shame, but I think that's the correct option. And I get another turn next turn to crew again. Broken wings. Okay. No attacks. And turn. Sentinels also useful for what I'm looking to do. Do I attack with these two? Does that make a difference? I can jump with the Sentinel anyway. I guess I can attack with this too. I don't mind them blocking the Vandal. Although actually I'm thinking that means he can hit back for 7. I'm going to block here. What happens if I draw a... So, set no blocks and then I can chump next turn with these three. And I'm down to... that's three so I've got five left. Should be okay. Gonna be close. Skemfire would be great. Monstrous Growth would be great. Mammoth Growth, sorry. So attack here. He blocks here. Just trying to think. Three, seven. It's only seven damage, so it's not enough. But I certainly attack here. And I use my Mammoth Growth as a combat trick. Okay. Okay. See so attacks this turn. Do I... Okay, so I just block and use Mammoth Growth, don't I? That's fine by me. Of troll. So you can double block the Lindworm. So if I attack with the Lindworm, what happens if you, it's get trampled? I need to remember that it has trampled, so it hits me for four anyway. So he swings with both. I triple block the Seraphs. He hits for four. I still have one. Okay, it's fine by me. I don't mind so much. Okay, double blocks. Something I thought might happen. Sacrifice this land, so I need to hit for these Saraphs, don't I? No, because I can block the Saraphs. 
guess that was a mistake. I needed to wait until I had Mammoth Growth again. Or Skemfire. Kind of flooded out again, but whatever. I guess we're down to the last 14. The opponents get plenty of land as well. That's a bit of a shame. I misplayed that just at the end there. Now he's a 4 4 with tramples. So I need to triple block the Seraphs. But sadly, that's the game. I misplayed the end game. Hmm. Don't know if I had what it took to win this one. Probably not. The opponent was probably going to win. Yeah, that's a shame. I misplayed it at the end though. I should have kept the Lindworm back. Could have put a token on it as well. I put a token on one of the flyers and just went in with the flyers. It would have been on a five turn clock. He would have attacked me once. I block with the Lindworm. That's a shame. Alright, either way we will call it here. One pack. Jesus, not, not the best uh, traditional draft I've done. But that is my game for the day. So I'm going to call it there. I'll get the additional three wins. Is it three wins? One more win I need. I'll get it just off stream. I appreciate you joining me. Bye-bye.